lives. We all feel that we are carrying on our daughter's battle and nothing will stop us doing that. That's, that's the thing that matters now. The three mothers are supporting a pioneering project in Croydon, South London, called the Family Justice Centre. It's the first of its kind in Europe, and here they recognise that to prevent murders like Claire's, more work needs to be done. I cry two, three hours a day. All victims of stalking or domestic violence are classed as high risk when they first arrive. Then the danger they are in is fully assessed. If people were coming here and they were coming here for help with stalking, we'd um, listen to what they would say was happening, um, what help they needed, and then put them in touch with the right people here. Family Justice Centre, I help you. At the moment, we've got 30-plus agencies and organisations, and that's people from Relate, from Victim Support, from Croydon Women's Aid, who provide refuge, um, police officers, uh, investigators. So right across the full range um, of services that people would need to get help from. Are you still part of the same team? Yeah. yeah. Police in Croydon believe working with other agencies at the centre makes it easier for them to protect victims of stalking. In the year before the Family Justice Centre was established in Croydon, we had four murders that were related to domestic violence. The centre's now been in operation for two years, and we haven't had domestic-related murders. But the centre is far more than that. Whilst we want to prevent murders, we want to reduce harm. It's providing the environment, it's meeting the needs of the persons. From a police service perspective, the Family Justice Centre enables the police officers to focus their skills on the investigation. It's about holding perpetrators to account. We're out to support Family Justice Centres, and the three of us truly believe that they save lives, that they could have saved our daughters' lives. Trisha, Stella and Carol want to see one such centre in every city. They were there in January 2008 when the Home Affairs Select Committee visited. The MP's mission to find out if they're the answer to the growing problem of stalking and domestic violence. If we had this kind of setup and Claire was able to go to it, do you think that the scenario that ended up with her dying would have been different? I think it quite possibly could have been different because you're not having one person having to assess. You have many people assessing. Um, pulling together their expertise. What I'm trying to campaign for is police and other agencies to pull together and work together and by doing so you'll get a true and accurate assessment. Nobody can get into the mind of a, a, the perpetrator and he, he may well have found a way but it's, it's all those little pieces that everybody knew, and I didn't find out till afterwards, taking a piece here and taking a piece there. And the, eight, well, the Family Justice Centre would have pulled all those pieces together, everybody's information they would have pulled together, and then they would have had a much, much stronger picture of what that man was capable of. Claire's murder brought shock and fear to the plush surroundings of Knightsbridge. But almost three years on, the police and authorities' new approach to stalking may yet save other lives. For Claire, of course, any improved protection for stalking victims is too late, both for her and for her family. I informed him to leave me alone, and I told him this in my sleeping pattern and that I haven't slept as I'm scared that he's waiting outside. And he said to me, if you dare report me, I'm going to kill you. There's a big gaping hole in our lives. This terrible void that will never be filled. It's preventing other families from the heartache that we've, we've felt and, and, our, and our feeling. And doing something positive something that for Claire. And 
For further information on this program, please go to our website, itv.com slash realcrime.